Hello. How's everybody doing? All right, in this video, I want to get a few things out of the way. First of all, I want to explain to you um, your kits. Those of you that picked them up at Lewis, a couple people had them sent out. So when you get them, um, hopefully by today, uh, you're going to notice that it's just a mailing tube. So you're going to take one of the ends off. For the people that picked up at Lewis, it's not taped, so just pull that one off. And in there, um, you're going to have a, a Wonder White round brush, nice big brush for some of the big areas you want to do. Uh, a pan of watercolors like this, which also has a brush in it. And then to get your um, to get your paper out, rather than trying to fish in there and, and mess it all up, you're going to do kind of like a Star Wars thing or baseball if you've played baseball or softball. Okay, and you're going to just have to kind of do that. And then you got to notice the paper comes out the top like this. Once that happens, then you should be able to pull it. Once you pull all the five sheets of paper out, you might want to, if you have room, put them somewhere flat, put some heavy things on them. You can also try to reverse roll them so that they flatten out that way. Um, so that's the best way to deal with that. And then just keep the tube. The tube's yours if you want to mail something in the future. Maybe after you make a, after you make a cool painting, you could... Uh, roll it up and mail it to one of your friends or family as a gift. So, all right, so we're going to get started here on uh, our first painting, which is the square painting. And I, I have the luxury of a large ruler. If you don't have a large ruler, you could use a small ruler, a tape measure. And what you're going to do is you're going to make a mark every one inch along the bottom of your paper, make a little mark every one inch that correlates with this one along the top. Do the same on the sides, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to connect the dots, okay? And when you do it, do it really, really lightly in pencil, okay? So that when you are done, you are going to get, Allie, if you can get kind of close on there, you're going to get basically a grid of one by one squares. Now, if your squares are a little wobbly or they're a little off or something, it won't matter. It won't affect your grade or anything like that. We really just want a bunch of... Uh, um, shapes to paint. Now back to when I was talking earlier in the color video about um, that idea of like tinting. So you go to Walgreens, you look at nail polish and you see that there are slightly different tints of the same hue and then the tints change so much that it becomes really a new hue. Um, you see this at paint stores with the color swatches and the makeup counter with eyeshadow, like I said nail polish and so on. So. What we're going to do here, a lot of people wind up doing an entire um, rainbow on here, which is fine. You can do that. You can uh, have it be just sort of like earth colors, browns and greens and yellows and things. You could have it be mostly cool with uh, grays and blues. You can transition from like red to blue if you want. It doesn't make any difference to me. What you are going to want to do, and I'll send an email to kind of explain this too, is for every square that you paint, okay, every direction that you go, diagonally, up, down, left, or right, you are going to be changing the tint 10%. So for example, if I paint kind of a, a slate blue right here, the next one up, I, I don't want to paint any of these the same color, so I'm going to change 10% every direction that I go. Okay, so that we get this slow fade from one color group to the, the next. Don't paint in rows and then change it per row. That's proving that you can do it, but it's easier to do it that way. We're doing it concentrically. So every direction you go, there's roughly a 10 to 20% change in tint. Okay, now that could mean change in hue, color, intensity, a tone. It could be kind of really all of those, and I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Okay. Now, quickly here, <clears throat> you can see I've got my watercolor set up going. Uh, this is the little brush that comes in the, um, in the uh, kit. And you might want to run a little water through it and dry it out, get some of that glue off there, okay? Now, notice we don't have, like I explained in the um, color video, we don't necessarily have an alizarin crimson, although that is pretty much an alizarin. Here's a orange, which is very similar to cadmium red. Pretty much a yellow, so there's your cadmium yellow. That's pretty much a permanent green. 
This is kind of a cobalt, thalocyanine, ultramarine combination. So it's not quite, but next to it, you've got a violet. So if you add a little violet into it, it lo this looks dark, but it's actually a violet, you get that more of that ultramarine. So it's really a nice palette for that. You throw in a brown there, you're welcome to use that once in a while. And a color that I really actually don't want you to use a whole lot is black. You can use it occasionally. Now, one thing that's missing there is white. We don't see white because the white is the paper. So if you wanted something to be pure white, you just wouldn't add paint to it, okay? And we don't want to let water be our way of getting that 10% change all the time. Once in a while, you could use a little water to make it lighter. That's fine, but you don't want to get in the habit of that. So let's just say that I start with that kind of slate blue in here, okay? So I'm going to grab a little bit of my blue and I'm going to use my pan here as a mixing. Uh, so you got, these are semi-moist colors, so you got to get a little water and kind of work them in there a little bit. As we said, the complement of blue is what? Okay, orange. So I'm going to go right into my orange pan here, my little orange pot, and just change that. Notice how I'm already getting that kind of nice slight blue because I mixed blue with orange. Why did it work that way? Because I'm mixing all the colors together by adding blue, which is a primary, to an orange, which is made up of yellow and red, I've mixed all the colors together. Now, you always want to have a little paper off to the side where you're going to kind of plan on or do a little test uh, swatches of your color to see if you like what you're about to do. When you get to your paper, if your paper is super um, uh, curled from the mailing, um, Again, lay something heavy on it. You might want to tape your paper down with a watercolor. I like to move my um, move my paper around a little bit. Now, this is going to be one of those uh, paintings where you are going to want to try to stay in the lines. So I'm just going to use the tip of the brush and just ever so slowly. If you paint your nails a lot, you're you know you've kind of been there, done that. You're trying to be neat as possible. Okay, so I'm going in like that. Now we're going to allow for a little bit of that kind of unevenness of color, that modeling that you get with watercolor. All right, now I'm going to go back to my paint pot. Now what do I do? That's sometimes people have a hard time. Like, what, what do you want me to do now? Like, do I, how do I change this? So I just added some blue. I don't know, I'll throw a little bit of this um, alizarin red, make it a little bit more violet. Maybe I'll add a small amount of the violet into there. Okay, so now, now I'm more intense blue. It's not changed a whole lot, but it's probably at least 10%. And I'm now I'm going to go right next to my gray. Make sure that you're going right up to the adjacent color. Don't leave little areas of white in there. Okay. Again, this is my this is called pot painting. So I'm doing a lot of um, my tinting and mixing right into the color that I just made, especially if I'm able to do it all at one time. Okay. You can see my hand shake a little bit from too much coffee, so um, I'm doing a pretty nice job here, but you know, it's a little wobbly. That's okay. As long as you're painting each square individually, I don't have a problem with it. I don't want you to wash it across a bunch of squares, okay? Now again, you're going to find yourselves occasionally just like, okay, well, what, what do I do now? And it's not rocket science here. You're just going to kind of keep changing your color, altering it slightly. I'm going to go a little bit more blue. So this is a more intense blue, obviously, compared to the first color. I'm still in that 10 to 20% ratio. If you go outside of it, nobody has a meter or anything, but we don't want to put like bright orange next to this. That would not, that would be beyond 10 to 20%. That would be closer to like, you know, 75 to 100% change. Notice how I'm getting rid of these little white alley. If you can zoom in there, get rid of these little tiny white things. We don't want any of those popping through. One of the main reasons is they're a distraction, so craftsmanship is going to be part of this deal. But the other problem, too, is it's hard to go back and fix those later. Okay, It requires a lot of extra work to do that. All right, so now I'm getting into this kind of blue-violet, the complement of violet being yellow. So I'm going to just throw a little bit of yellow in there and just see what happens kind of gets me back to my original color. So I want to kind of steer away from that because I don't want to I don't want to have two of the same colors. So now I'm going a little bit more of a violet red, red violet. OK, 
Okay, coming in here, add a little bit of paint. You can see that little bit more of that kind of purpley color coming through. Right up to the edges. You want your, your shapes to kind of kiss one another. Okay. Just like that. Now I'm going to continue on this for a while and I'll check back with you guys and maybe post another video of my progress just like you guys are doing. But you get the idea. So if, if you look at that from a distance, it probably looks like the same color almost. But when you come in close, Allie, uh, when you come in close, you can see the differences of the colors. So that's, that's kind of how we want this thing to look, okay? Um, at any time, if your color pots get too mixed, messed up, you can add a little bit of water to them, okay? Let's say I add a little bit of water to this yellow, and I can actually just take paper towel and sort of dab it out. All right, so if I got myself a mess over here with this orange, add just a tiny bit of water and just kind of dab it out and it kind of gets you back to your original orange color, okay? When you guys go to um, clean up for the day, you want to clean out your brush thoroughly. You don't want to leave it in the, um, in the water like this overnight. You'll ruin your brush like this semester, okay? And then with the paint pots, what I do is I rinse the whole thing under water in the kitchen sink kind of clean it out, not too long because you don't want to waste the paint, but just kind of hit it real quick, rinse it a little bit, you could dab it with a paper towel, throw the paper towel out, dry your brush off, you're ready for your next time you get a chance to go paint, okay? So we are looking to fill this entire sheet with uh, individually painted squares that change 10 to 20 percent uh, each time you move in any direction. So if I go this way, 10 to 20 percent. I go that way, 10 to 20 percent. I go down any direction I go. If you get bored working in a big group like this, you could jump over here and start another color group and try to get them to merge. Um, so I'll follow up with a short video after I put some time into this, but uh, this will at least get, get you going. And um, if you have any questions, as always, just shoot me an email and I will um, answer you right away. So thanks for listening. Allie, thanks for videotaping. We'll talk to you later.